Okay, I am at Tiffany M. Draper, and before the video starts, I just want to say that if you hear the rain in the background, I don't know, I live in Texas, the weather is stupid crazy, so yeah. Are you ASMR lovers out there? Go ahead and listen to them sounds. But, um, Mari Safari. Uh, I'm, I've been looking at a couple of people's videos talking about a couple that committed suicide two days apart from each other. And I was like, hmm. And this happened on April 22nd? So I'm going through Mari Safari's page and, and I'm calling it Mari Safari and, you know, Mercedes death exposed because I'm exposing all of the people that so-called call themselves, you know, caring about them. But this is what I find funny. They're all talking about how they miss Mari, but they apparently were ignoring him enough for him to feel ignored and that nobody cared. People always want to claim they miss you. But when you were alive, they ignored you or barely had time for you or stood you up or didn't want to listen to you. And I was listening to a popular YouTuber and she was basically saying, look, you need to be able to vent. You know what I'm saying? You need to be able, in, in most of the time, your inner circle, the people that talk to you the most, they're not going to be there for you. The people that, and I wouldn't say talk to you the most, but the people that you feel like you should be able to count on the most, they're not going to be there for you. You see what I'm saying? When you need them the most. But you still have to be able to vent. And, and that I understand. And for the people that's been watching my videos lately and you think, oh, she's going to say something disrespectful. She's going to blame the person. Nah, man, if it's one thing I do understand is you will find yourself at that breaking point so many times in this life because we are surrounded by people who don't truly care about us and love us in the way that they should. You feel me? And if you don't feel me, then please keep watching this video because as I'm scrolling, and forgive uh, the lag of the page loading because, like I said, it is raining. You know, that affects the Wi-Fi. But anyway, as I'm scrolling down the page, you will see so many people tagging Mari Safar. Oh, I miss you. Oh, I love you. You got even people trying to run games. Well, I started a PayPal or I started a GoFundMe so that you can give money to his mom. I guarantee you that money probably isn't going to make it to his mom. Now, I want to get into what I feel about it. <clears throat> I really feel like, you know, we all hear that cliche saying suicide is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. But let's keep it real. A lot of these problems we have in our lives, they're not temporary. They go on and on and on. And <clears throat> we as human beings, there's nothing weak. There's nothing weak about a person that commits suicide. And I'll tell you why. Death is one of the most feared things, if not the most feared thing in this life. And for somebody to bring upon, you know, bring death upon themselves, that takes a strong individual because you're going to face the unknown. All these scammers out here trying to tell you what happens after death and nobody knows what happens after death because you got to be dead to be able to find out and you're not going to be able to come back to tell us living people what happened. So I don't believe Mari Safari or his girlfriend was weak. And also this, it did bring back, um, you know, Romeo and Juliet vibes when I heard about the story of modern day Romeo and Juliet because Romeo and Juliet truly did love each other. If this was really a real, if Romeo and Juliet were really, really, really real, somebody come in and let me know. Um, My whole life I've heard this story, so let's go with it. Let's say it's real. I believe it's a beautiful thing that in this day and age that a young man truly did love a young woman. 
You see what I'm saying? Because we got was it beautiful that he killed himself? No. So don't don't come on here getting it twisted in my comment session section. I am saying I believe that it's beautiful that he cared so much about this young lady. You see what I'm saying? Not that to the point that where he would take his life, but I thought it was it is beautiful that it shows that men, and especially young men of this day and age, are capable of loving young women. I say it all the time. Um, I don't think some of my homeboys understand what I meant, but I say I think it's a beautiful thing when a young man, his heart is broken because it shows that he's capable of loving because we see in this generation, people always saying, oh, we don't love them hoes or don't show them hoes no love or they make it seem like a man is soft or he's a simp if he shows his woman any type of love. You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> with that being said, I also have a problem with people always talking about relationship goals, especially with this young couple being 18 years old, man. Um, I, when I am in a relationship, I know that compromise and commitment and, you know, making time for each other and understanding other people's point of view and all of that stuff that's involved in having a successful, healthy relationship. It took me several years from having had my first boyfriend to even know how to truly be a good girlfriend. I've always considered myself a good girlfriend when it comes to not cheating and being loyal and being faithful, but all the other stuff that you can go wrong in a relationship, it took me from the time I had my for first boyfriend at 16 until now be turning 26 on the 11th of May. So if me, almost 26, knows that it's hard to maintain a successful relationship based on all the emotions that we go through as young people, I know 18, when I was 18, come on now, I was a little hothead, you can tell me nothing. <clears throat> so for people my age to be coming on they stuff talking about relationship goals, what? How about life goals? How about getting yourself to and i used to I always hate when people say you need to know who you are before you jump in a relationship you need to love yourself before you jump in a, it is so true y'all i promise you it's true because if this young man had a known that you know <clears throat> as hard as this is to deal with it's gonna be okay i'm gonna move on and one day i'm gonna find somebody else to settle down with. But, you know, I remember crying like a newborn baby on two or three occasions after my heart was broken by these guys out here. But not one time that I think, I am going to go, no, I'm not going to kill myself. Because at the end of the day, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I mean, as a Christian, it's definitely not worth it for me because I don't know what the end result is for somebody who who takes life into their own hands i and, and well takes death in their own hands and kills himself i just don't know and i'm not one of those people on the internet or in real life that claims to have all the answers i'm trying to get to april 22nd y'all that's why i'm scrolling i want y'all to see the fakeness of people acting like they really love them and they were so close and tagging them in pictures and uh, making his pictures of, of with them, their profile picture, and all this other fake social media attention horror stuff. I want y'all to see all this. But for the sake of time, I'm going to pause this video and get to April 22nd because I want to see this, I want to see this note or letter or whatever it was, his suicide letter that he wrote on social media. Now, those of y'all correct me in the comment section. Did he kill himself on live? Because if he did that, I have a very big problem with that. I have a very big problem with that because that to me <clears throat> would indicate somebody that is seeking fame and wants to be an immortal. But if he didn't, which I don't think he did based on that eight minute video, I believe 
it did end before he killed himself, then that truly just meant that he was just tired. Like I have, I, I, I used to take, and I did recently here too, take breaks from social media, especially Facebook, because I just get tired of people, the fakeness, the neediness, the just people not being real and true. So if he didn't kill himself on social media live, then he had enough respect for his family not to let them have to see that or his friends. But at the same time, he didn't have enough respect. And I believe he was a little selfish, but what do you expect from an 18-year-old to kill yourself in the first place? Because my dad always tells me that what I do does not just affect me. It doesn't. It affects everyone around you. So if you're going to have the audacity to kill yourself and not, it, it did not occur to you that your mom, your dad, your siblings, if you have them, your grandparents, if they're still alive, your aunts, your uncles, and your true friends, they're going to be <clears throat> affected by this. And I'm not going to sit here and say that like that Stevie Stevens dude, uh, whatever his name was, when he said he was you know, upset because nobody had time for him and nobody wanted to listen to him and they made it seem like his problems weren't all that important. I'm not gonna sit here and say that all friends and people are fake and they never have time for you. Sometimes people are really just preoccupied with their own lives, they're preoccupied, they're busy. They have their own problems. It's not that they don't care about you, but they're just trying to keep their head above water. You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to make sure they don't go crazy. Or they don't lose it or uh, go off on the people that's pissing them off on their jobs or go off on their family that won't get it together. You see what I'm saying? Or, or, or keeping up a bunch of drama and strife and confusion. That's why I say that cliche say, saying, oh, suicide is a permanent solution for a temporary situation. No. A lot of us are stuck in situations, not because we refuse to get out or we don't want to get out. It's because we can't get out. It takes money to be able to move out of uh, bad situations, or it takes a car to be able to leave. And some people, they have these bullcrap minimum wage jobs that they can barely afford to keep their phone on every month or to pay a roommate with rent, let alone have their own place. That's why I tell people all the time, the happiest you will ever be in your entire life will be when you don't have to depend on anyone but God, seriously. Because the people that do help you, a lot of times they'll throw it up in their face or they'll fuss as they're doing it. Parents have that bad. So it's like, people feel like, you know what? I'm done, I'm tired. And I, I find myself at that point a lot. And that's when you know that you have to remove yourself from the situation so that you won't hurt yourself or others. What do people tell new mothers all the time, doctors and nurses? If you feel like that you may get to the point to where you will shake that baby because the baby is crying too much, put the baby in the crib, make sure the baby is safe and there's no hazards around and go for a walk or something. It's not that the mother doesn't care about the baby, especially when she has postpartum depression. It's, it's something psychological going on there. It's not that she does not love her child. It's that, hey, I'm going through a lot of pressure and stress right now. So this young man, Mari Safari, from the video, from what I, from what I gathered from the video, he felt like people were blaming him for his girlfriend's suicide. And yet I bet the same people as we as, as as I scroll down in this video that blamed him for her suicide are the ones talking about fly high or rest in peace. I miss you. I can't believe you would do this. But yet y'all were the same ones saying, how you gonna let your girl kill herself? Or <clears throat> she killed herself because of you or this and that, and this and that, and this and that. When he said that his girl was pregnant and that she really didn't have the support and everything that she needed. And so he was trying to be the best boyfriend that he could be for her. Does that sound like somebody that, that didn't care about his girlfriend or that wouldn't care if she killed herself? 
he was excited, according to him, to be a father himself. He was excited. Come on now. Come on. Let me pause this video. Let me let me pause this video and get to April 22nd. And let me just say this really fast before I forget. People were so so infatuated by the way this young man and his girlfriend looked. <clears throat> that is why he and her, I believe, felt as though nobody would really take them serious if they said they were having problems, be it relationship problems or their own personal problems. Like, I hate when people feel like you're so cute and they don't take anything you say seriously. Like one time I made a video and I was just talking about, and I'm not one of, don't get twisted, I'm not one of those people that thirst trap and then get mad when somebody leaves a comment. Now I can be looking bummy and busted and y'all still want, oh, she's cute. No, what am I saying? I made a video one time against a popular YouTuber and a popular YouTuber came on my video talking about, Man, you're cute. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But did you hear what I said? Like, that's why I don't think I'm nearly as fine as a Marilyn Monroe or a Beyonce or a, um, can't think of nobody dark skin, but y'all know we got pretty a team dark skin out there, a team brown skin out there. Just can't think off the top of my head. But I ain't nearly as fine as them. That's why I think beauty and fineness and gorgeousness and drop dead gorgeousness is a curse. I would hate to walk around looking like Marilyn Monroe or, or Q Quincy from um Star. I would hate that because people don't truly really like you for you. They just want to be with you for your looks or to have a pretty baby or all this other foolishness. So when people like him, they can't even get people to take them serious beyond uploading a fine, sexy picture. That's all people want to see. And most of these people do crave that attention and that love. So, I mean, they're partially, they're partially to blame because they feed off of that type of attention, especially ugly people. <laughs> and, and females, oh my God, an ugly female, she could still get loads of likes, tons of likes if she has some booty or she has some titties or whatever, some thick thighs, nice legs. She, a face could be beat. She could look like seal in the face, but she'll still get to get a bunch of likes. And it's like, this generation, I don't know if it's broken homes or what. Parents not giving their children, a, a, you know, enough love and attention. I don't know what it is, but they seek validation from social media so much. Shout out to Marlon, man. I have to get back to you. I have to get back to you. But they seek validation from social media and acceptance and all this other bullcrap. I don't give a, let me let this be known right now to a new subscriber or an old subscriber. I don't care whether you like me or not. And I know people say that a lot, I don't care. No, I really don't care. You wanna know how I really don't care? Cause when you leave all the bullcrap comments on my videos, if the video was just uploaded, I may entertain you. But after a while, I, like I tell people all the time, I entertain you if I'm bored. I don't have nothing else to do. But I'm busy trying to be a, a you know, a good person in this world, um, a productive citizen. I don't have time to argue with you because you don't agree with what I said. This my channel. This my video. This my life. I'm entitled to my own personal opinion. I don't care whether you don't like me or not. Now, of course, I, I I love the support. I love when people leave nice comments on my videos, but I don't live for that. I don't wake up 
Ooh, can I upload a booty pic so that I can get a bunch of likes and feel good about myself? No. If my picture got 200 likes, great. If it got 20 likes, great. I already know, cute as my face is, I get a lot of likes, but it doesn't matter. Because I already know I'm not going to be those type of girls that get tons of likes on my pictures because I don't upload booty pics. Now, I was blessed with some booty. Don't get it twisted. I was blessed with a nice body. But I got a daddy. Excuse me. I have a father in my life. So I don't need a bunch of men. Basically, what I'm saying is I don't have to thirst trap all day. <laughs> I don't have to do it. And y'all don't either. Go read a book. Go work a puzzle. Go volunteer for some old folk that's on their last breath. All jokes aside. Go make somebody happy. Go make somebody smile. And don't put it on social media telling the world, I just gave a homeless person $5. Tension whores. Now, like my granny used to say, R.I.P., if you get your reward down here, you ain't going to get it in heaven. She ain't said ghetto like that. But you're not going to get, I'm paraphrasing, you're not going to let God reward you with some crowns in heaven, basically. But y'all won't get all, like I hate when people do that, especially celebrities. I just gave someone some money. I just bought someone a car. Did you do it because you really wanted to help them? Or did you want people to just say, yeah, you're a good person on social media? Like, 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 heart reactions on Facebook. Like, come on now. Come on. So it's just a lot of things, you know, stories that I cover that people want to feel like I'm too harsh. Y'all attacking the messenger. Why don't y'all go out there and attack the people that are actually living these ratchet crazy lives not mari safari but in, in in reference to my video about bty youngin you don't know what you're talking about what do you mean i don't know what i'm talking about i'm telling you what happened and i'm giving you my opinion based on what happened my opinion cannot be wrong or right it's my opinion sit up here getting mad at me because i'm telling the truth this young man, B.T.Y. Youngin, all this darn cussing and flossing, and y'all gonna say, oh, you know, you disrespecting the dead, and well, he can't hear me? How am I disrespecting the dead? Y'all disrespecting the dead when y'all don't tell them to clean up their lifestyles before they end up on the pavement or under, you know, six feet under. Y'all disrespecting the dead because y'all could have told them before they died and they'd still be in the land of the living. But that's another video. People come in on my uh video talking about you wrong for that and calling me out my name and I'm being disrespectful because he has a family. Right. Where was his family when he was standing on top of cars at gas stations at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning holding a wad of cash. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you the difference between BTY Youngin and Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy does the same thing, but Soldier Boy isn't stupid. Soldier Boy's been in this game 10 years plus, 10 years deep, a decade. He's not really about that life that he, he portrays in his songs. He's smart enough to know, let me do this behind closed doors or around a bunch of niggas who claim to be about their life, but they just steal from me here and there. He's not out there at 2 o'clock in the morning with no bodyguard. Birdman, on the other hand, is not about that life either. He's smart enough to know, when I make it, I'm gone. Bye, people. And then this other idiot going to come, come out. This is how we do it in the booth. This is where we from, or Louisiana, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Look, you stupid idiot. You're going to be the next casualty. I hate the fact that my people glorify, like, glorify the, the thug lifestyle um i had to unsubscribe to a bunch of these people especially people doing stories on chicago and all that stuff y'all think it's cute i'm gonna it, the titles of the video be like uh did 10 years in the pen for robbing a store or the time they were talking about how they got shot five times or how they was dealing drugs at 12. that's not an accomplishment you idiot 
that's not a good thing. But yet us black people, yeah, because I'm about that life. Be the main ones dead. But you about that life, right? Talking about how rich you are, how you can go buy Audi cash, but you ain't got enough money or sense to have a bodyguard if you're going to be out there doing stupid stuff and talking reckless. This ain't got nothing to do with the Illuminati blood sacrifice and all that bull crap it's about this generation is stupid can i keep it real i was born in 1991 and i admit the fact that this generation is stupid they care about stuff that don't even matter i don't care what you think of me these people up here killing themselves online because they're being they're being cyber bullied. How about you turn off the computer? How about you block people? Oh, let me go and hang myself because people are talking about me. So what? They talk about Beyonce, fine as she is. They talk about Halle Berry, fine as she is. They talk about Iman. Well, I don't think she's fine. They talk about Naomi Campbell, fine as she is. They talk about you when you're doing good, and they talk about you when you're doing bad. So what? Get over it. You're going to have to have some tough skin to be able to live and exist in 2017 because we have professional trolls on the internet that will come on your videos and call you out of your name for the heck of it. Because they don't have nothing better else to do. I've been on YouTube since I was 17. I say that all the time. There's nothing that I haven't heard. Does it hurt my feelings at times? Yes. Am I going to go hang myself? No. I'll get over it. So I feel sorry for Mari Safari. I feel sorry for his girlfriend. And I feel sorry for anybody that thinks that, you know, oh, let me take myself out. It will get better. I've thought about at times, you know, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But if not for God, I'm not preaching to you. I look at my life now and the things that I know that I'm about to be able to do. What if I took myself out? What if I did that? Because people don't like me. I don't give a fuck. Excuse my language. Y'all know I don't cuss on YouTube like that. But I don't care. That's my life. Live your life. I don't live for other people's validation and approval. And y'all need to get to that same way. Don't just say I don't care but really care. Don't care and mean it. Make yourself not care. Make yourself not go see if the people that don't like you is talking about you on your page. Make yourself not respond when people try to bring you into their drama or create drama with you. Make yourself not care. Are you going to be the next person people talking about that and kill themselves? Now, with that being said, I am at Tiffany M. Draper. I got 1.3 million views on YouTube for a reason. Because I be talking. And I say something with some substance. I'm not twerking. I'm not showing my body. I'm not making videos to go viral. We're talking about sucking dick and all that other stupid crap as if I don't have nothing else to offer but these sexy, juicy lips that my daddy gave me. I love people. I want to see people make it, be successful, but most importantly, be happy. And it is possible in this life to be happy. You just got to void out all the bull crap. Filter the bull crap. Put your, put, no, excuse me, put God, then put yourself first. Because don't nobody love you like you. But you got to love you. Peace out.